Today I will be using the Hawaiian Shows Dual Tip Pens, discovering ways to use these pens and completing one project, featuring the Paint of Lava Himalayan Poppy stamp set. Stay tuned! <music> So as I mentioned, I will be using the Paint of Lava Himalayan Poppy stamp set, which was released today, and it has a lovely sentiment stamps, beautiful fonts, as always. So this is the first time that I'm opening my pack of pens, and uh, look at those gorgeous colors. I will be swatching these out. The brush tip has a hard tip. It's not like the Alton New Watercolor brush markers. Uh, they have a softer tip. And they have bristles. This one is a hard tip and the other side has a very fine tip. As I heard from Virginia that these are water reactors. So I will be scribbling these onto a watercolor cardstock and also adding a bit of water to uh, uh, just see how they react with water. The first color on there is crimson. Then autumn blaze. Honey drizzle. Maple Yellow, Firefly, Just Green, Evergreen, Turquoise, Persian Blue, Ultraviolet, Pure Graphite, and lastly, Silverstone. Now the first thing I'm going to do is use these markers as ink. And I'm going to apply this onto the stamp and uh, stamp the image onto Crest Solar White cardstock. I'm going to scribble Crimson, Autumn Blaze, Maple Yellow and Honey Drizzle onto the stamp. And then I'm going to use the fine mister and spritz a little bit of water onto the stamp. I'll just spritz the water a couple of times because I'm using this for the first time. I'm going to be a little careful and I can always add more paint later on if I do need it. And if I do need a bit, little bit more pigment, I will just apply uh, the marker pigment onto those areas and no more water this time because we are working on Crestola White cardstock. So I'm just going to close the door again and uh, see how the result looks. Okay, so this is how it looks uh, with less water. And now what I'm going to do is apply a little bit more ink and add a little bit more water and show you how it looks. And there we have it. I do like this more bold look, the smudged look. I love that look. It looks like I've stamped on fabric. Now I'm going to set this aside to dry. You can even use your heat tool, but we are just testing out uh, how these brushes work on different papers. This was Crestola Wide and now I'm going to take the A2 Loose Watercolor uh, Cardstock by Altenew and I'm going to repeat the same steps again. I'm going to scribble some pigment onto the stamp and then spritz water using the fine mister and then close the door off my stamp positioner, stamp the image on to as many times as I want to. This is the first look and it does look very pretty. I have another idea that we can do with this. I'm going to use the fine mister and going to spray onto the panel directly so that the pigment spreads. I just want to see how it looks and it will also give us a ghostly effect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and uh, color over the stamp and stamp again. In this way, I will get a prominent image. Not as prominent because the paper is still wet. I will leave it for a second or two so that it uh, I get a good impression. While I will go back to the other panel that we worked on and uh, try to see if I can add splatters to that panel using these markers. I will just scribble onto the slick surface and my slick surface being the stamp positioner door. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this and yes, I can add splatters very well. And they look fine. And while I'm at it, I will think I'm also going to add black splatters and just uh, create a card right away. Because uh, this does look nice to me and I can just stamp my sentiment and be done with it. Adhere this onto a red card base and this is going to look very nice. Now let's go back to that panel that we were working on and oh wow this looks like a hot mess doesn't it? Um, okay we can salvage this. It It's going to be fine you guys. 
I am mostly just talking to myself right now. Um, it will be okay. I'm going to follow the same uh, steps more or less. I'm going to add splatters to this too. A lot more splatters than I added on the first card because this is more rungy looking, more messy. So let's add a lot of splatters to this so that it just sort of um, comes together somehow. Just try to save this. So I'm now going to dry this completely. And I just had an idea and uh, I hope this will work. So I still have the stamp in my stamp positioner and I have dried the panel completely. What I thought was that it's going to look very nice if I um, stamp the image in obsidian ink. And that is exactly what I am doing right now, just uh, stamping the image in obsidian ink. And you will see that it looks absolutely wonderful. I just saved the panel. <laughs> I stamped this a couple of times to get a like a really bold uh, outline and then I will add black paint splatters to just go with the um, look and balance the black outline and I will show you this um, up close so you can see those um, colored lines and it does look really cool in person and that ghostly effect that I was talking about it shows through it looks very nice I didn't think it would look uh, this good but it does you should definitely give it to, give this a try okay moving on so for my third panel i am going to color uh, using these markers and as you have seen these are not as water reactive as the watercolor brush markers by alternate these are mostly for writing purpose and yes for coloring uh, too but uh, what i really like about this is if i need to uh, have you know get some strokes um, on my petals these are wonderful for that purpose and uh, that is what i wanted to show you here what i'm doing is i'm using essentially the same colors uh the yellows and the oranges and green the same ones and uh, i am adding them as strokes on to the flowers i'm going to be adding yellow and orange uh, near the flower center and on the tips i'm going to add the crimson the red color and then i am using a water brush to spread out the color not giving much thought to this i'm just trying out if uh, this reacts um, as well to water and spreads out and if i uh, am able to get rid of that stroke but i found out that i wasn't able to get rid of the stroke which i actually um, thought was very cool because um, you never really um, get this you know you even in the watercolor brush markers they are so reactive to uh, water you always get rid of the stroke that you lay down the first stroke and here this can work to your advantage this will help you not to you know spend a lot of time on your flower and look at that I was able to work on this flower without really working on this flower. I just needed to add a few strokes and it shows that um, there are ripples on the petals of my flowers without actually, you know, trying to add ripples to the flower. I also wanted to show you another way to use these markers if you wanted to color with them. You just need to apply this uh, pigment onto the area where you want to show the darkest um, part. Just apply a line of pigment over there and then spread it out towards the lighter part just like I did here on the leaf. I applied a darker pigment on the area where I want to show depth and shadow and then spread it outwards towards the tip of the leaf and I wanted to see if I can color a background with these markers and I can I all did the same thing uh, I applied pigment around the floral image as an outline and then spread it out with the water brush that I have and you can see that it worked beautifully once I'm done coloring the panel I'm just going to add a few splatters to this and uh, then I am going to be done. I will just show you up close how the strokes look. I actually really love the look. I love the strokes and I think I will be using these a lot. I know these are mostly for writing purpose but I am loving the quick um, look and you know that me <laughs> I'd go for a quick uh, watercolor look 
I mean, I was able to get the strokes and uh, the complete watercolor look in one sitting and one layer without drawing in between layers. So give me these markers and I am good. Now let's move on to our main project of the day. So I heat embossed this image onto 80 watercolor cardstock in platinum several times in a way that I will, was able to cover the entire panel. Now uh, what I'm going to do is the same thing that I learned while creating the previous panel. I'm going to add strokes with a gentle hand and as you can see I'm not really laying these down thick as I did with the red flower I colored previously. I need to see if I can create a soft look and as you can see we are able to achieve a soft looking flower with these mar vibrant markers too. And because we get that stroke, we still get the gorgeous dimension without trying too hard. That's what these markers are for. These are to color without trying too hard, you guys. I won't be using them for writing. I know this for sure. These are going to be my go-to from now on when I have to color images super fast. The technique is as good as my scribble spritz technique, but the bonus is that I will get the definition and detail through these markers in the very, very first attempt without waiting for the first layer to dry. I am sold, you guys. I don't know about you, but I am definitely sold. These are it for me, absolutely, um, because I do like the uh, stroke that I'm getting and that it is visible even after applying the water and the pigment also spreads beautifully when you apply water so I'm liking these. I'm going to color the leaves uh, in the same manner as I did on the previous panel just by applying one stroke of uh, pigment and then threading it out uh, outwards towards the tip of the leaf and here I am mixing two uh, colors one dark and one light in the uh, sample pieces that I was working on where I was just testing out these uh, pens, I showed you that in order to color the background, I, I first applied pigment uh, around the image and then spread it out with my water brush. But uh, because I wanted a light background and that is uh, the reason I did that, I didn't need an ex any extra pigment. But here, because I am adding a black background, and I need a darker black background, not just a gray background. So what I'm doing is I'm applying uh, an outline outside the image and also adding some pigment onto a slick surface that is my watercolor palette here. So I'm picking up a little bit of pigment with my water brush and also using the pigment that's already on the watercolor cardstock and spreading it outside. In this way, it gives me a little bit more concentrated pigment just to achieve a dark background. Once done, I will add splatters of purple watercolor. It's the same pigment, the ultraviolet. And I'm going to add very few of these. I'm also going to create a matching metallic watercolor by mixing the sterling silver and the metallic purple um, watercolor and uh, forming um, the exact shade of purple flowers that I have and add a bit of that onto the panel as well. Now that I'm done, I will just show you up close how gorgeous this looks. Look at all the detail that I have achieved. Uh, this is just my one layer of uh, paint, you guys. I have not dried this or added more layers of color on this. This is only one layer of color. And uh, here are my completed panels from um, the other test samples that I was working on. And they all look very nice. So these are a few of the ways that you can use these pens. And I hope you will give them a try. And here is how my project looks after putting it together. I really like how this turned out. I really like the light uh, tone that I was able to achieve. And still able to get those dimensions and definitions uh, in the first layer. I I'm very surprised with these pens as watercolor markers though they are not um, for use for this purpose I know that these are writing pens but you can definitely use them as watercolor markers I know I'll be using them to color my images thank you for watching everyone bye
Hello there, did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Alt New YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.